What's up, guys? This is Derek Kirby back again with another Mavericks video. Go figure. Go figure. But you know what? As great as it's been being able to put out these last couple of videos, I understand that I had a bit of a hiatus. And so I wanted to double back and try to put out some more content to make sure I scratch that proverbial itch you might have. And I'm not talking about the one you had to consult your doctor about. I'm talking about your Mavericks Talk fix. Predominantly, the fix that is this channel. Does my channel need fixing? I'm completely off in the wilderness here. I'm going to circle back, though, and expound further on that last Mavericks victory against the Memphis Grizzlies the other night. Yes, the Luka Doncic game winner, the most ridiculous game winner I've ever seen, and I mean that in the best of ways. But I want to talk about what the Mavericks have coming up. I alluded to it a little bit in that video. The next 10 games are very favorable to Dallas if they want to move. They're one game behind Portland for the sixth seed. Now two and a half up on the Grizzlies. By the way, get used to seeing the Grizzlies because you got them three more times in the next 10 games, brother. Brother, what am I, Hulk Hogan? Who am I? What you gonna do, brother? Anyway, I don't know why I do the things and say the things that I do. I think it's still, even after all these years, just a little bit of anxiety being on camera that my defense mechanism to not be awkward is to, in fact, be more awkward. So, you know, what are you going to do, brother? So you got the, for the next 10, you've got the Kings three times. You've got the Knicks. You've got the Pistons twice. You've got the Lakers twice, which, by the way, sounds like Anthony Davis and LeBron might be back in time for that. So that sucks. But maybe there's some rust there. Maybe you still have a chance to catch them a little bit flat-footed. Uh, you got the Wizards and the Warriors. That is your next 10. The Blazers have San Antonio, Charlotte, Memphis three times, the Nuggets, the Nets, the Pacers, and the Celtics. Your schedule is easier than that. Spurs are a good team, still fighting for their playoff lives. We know the Clippers are obviously a very good team. Memphis just showed they can be pesky as hell, and obviously they're clinging to that eight spot right now, trying to fight for their playoff lives. I mean, they'll probably get the play in regardless, but still, you know, there's a lot left uh, to fight for for them. The Pacers, eh. Boston, pretty good team. The Nets, a little different with, uh, you know, Blake Griffin has kind of regressed back to people saying he might be washed. Not, uh, not cool. <laughs> not cool for them for what I think they thought they might get for him. They kind of were hoping that it was all a ruse at the end of his Detroit days, that he was just waiting until someone good scooped him up and then he was going to dust off the old Cape and B Super Blake again with all the dunks and Lob City and all that. That has not really been the case. And then LaMarcus Aldridge, because of an irregular heartbeat, abruptly retired yesterday. So that was a surprising development. Suddenly the Uber Super Team of the East, with five gargantuan names in the NBA over the last decade, has one guy that kind of is moved out of that conversation for relevance right now and another who just retired so by the way salute to lamarcus aldridge dallas's own dude had an amazing amazing career i will always remember that first round playoff series between the mavericks and the blazers when he and dirk went head to head and there were i mean if you go back and you listen to that they were very very much gushing the broadcasters were on the future for aldridge and I think, you know, he had a very good career. It's a shame that it doesn't end on his terms necessarily, but, you know, you got to do what's best for you. It kind of reminds me of the Chris Bosh situation a few years ago with uh, his heart issue, actually, as well. So, anyway, back to it. The Blazers 
have a tougher schedule ahead of them in the next 10, and they are vulnerable right now. They've lost a couple games, and it sounds like they don't even know what they want to do with uh, C.J. McCollum. Very good player, but kind of falling out of favor there a little bit maybe. And so maybe you can expound on that. Maybe you can seize that opportunity. You just pulled Luka Magic out of your hat to beat the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies now more desperate. They're going to have three cracks at a team ahead of them in the standing. So obviously they're going to want to give it their all to knock them off at least twice in that if they can. And uh, you've got an opportunity with some bad teams coming up. Now, the Knicks, the Knicks are a playoff team in the East. They're a good team and a team that has given Dallas problems in the last two, three years. It's also a matchup that KP never seems to shine in, unfortunately. So we got to see. They got to come through in that. They need to get a win, I would say Dallas does, against the Knicks. Sacramento, that's a very winnable series of games there. And the fact that you catch them three times. I thought it was only twice when I talked about it yesterday. It's three times you get them. Detroit, not a good team right now. Lakers, maybe not as vulnerable as we thought, but maybe you're still catching them in an idyllic enough time. Idyllic enough. Maybe if I put the emphasis on the correct parts of the words, it doesn't sound as awkward and clunky and sexual. Yeah, but then who, you know, who's to say it's fun? Uh, the, the Wizards. Obviously, you got Beal, and what Russell Westbrook's done something ridiculous lately where he's had, like, it was recently he had, like, 10 triple-doubles in his last 11 games. So finding a little bit of his old stride, although there's just not a team with enough firepower around him. Unless you have both of those guys running wild, um, you've, you've got a real chance to, to get one there. The Wizards are not a good team. And, yeah, the, the Warriors, Steph has been incredible this year. And that's uh, another team that's right there in the thick of things. Not a team you want to face in a play-in game scenario. You do not want a single game with the trip to the playoffs on the line against Seth Curry. Excuse me. Seth? Man, I just defaulted back to a previous era that we were at twice, both times for about a year. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. It's actually hypocritical for me to be bitter about it because I celebrated the Josh Richardson trade for Curry, and uh, it hasn't worked out like I thought it would, so I deserve that one. Anywho, I would not want to have to face Steph Curry in a single-game play-in matchup for a playoff spot. Would not want to face that. So we'll see what they are able to do in these next 10 games but the Mavericks are sitting in a pretty good spot here chance to move up and you could reasonably reasonably stretch as high as four or five given the state of the immediate standings above you like I said Portland's got a tough stretch here coming up like they've got some tough games in these next 10 whereas yours are overwhelmingly more favorable now you got to deliver to it we know Dallas can play up or down to its level of competition at some point, you have to just go out there and play I win, which is to say, even if you're not really having your night, even if you're messing around with a team that's not necessarily as good as you, at some point, if you're a really good team, you basically say like, okay, guys, this is fun. Uh, see you later because we're going to go win now. And uh, I don't know, we'll catch you later. Because at the end of the day, we're the better team. The conversation is probably a little less awkward than that, but you know. So that's what Dallas has looking for them. The Blazers are in trouble. We don't really have a solid idea yet, but we know, obviously, uh, losing Murray was huge for Denver. Denver was rolling prior to that with him out with an ACL now. It could look very different in that regard. So you have two very vulnerable teams ahead of you. Now, none of that matters if you can't capitalize and get yourself some key wins. But you have two teams ahead of you that are vulnerable. The Lakers are sitting at the five seed right now. They're still 12 games over 500. So, you know, they're three games ahead of you right now, the Lakers are. If you could somehow move up 
in into that five six range. One, you're out of the play in tournament. I would like to say like, oh, maybe they could sneak into the four. I I don't see it. It's doable, but you're what three and a half back, four and a half back of the four seed. We'll see what happens to Denver now after this. They've obviously won their most recent game. So it's it's kind of hard to tell the full extent of the impact the Murray injury will have for them. Perhaps they'll fall off more, or perhaps it just limits their ability to go deeper in the playoffs because they're lacking a bona fide shot maker. Murray was unreal in the playoffs last year. That was a star-making postseason for him. So... We'll have to see what happens on that, but I do think that you can absolutely catch Portland if you take care of your business, and I don't know, man. We'll see what happens with the Lakers, how ready-made they are to just reclaim their form, recapture their form from earlier this year uh, prior to the LeBron and Anthony Davis injuries. That's huge, though, if you catch them, even just with a significant amount of rust, if you can steal one or both of those games... And Dallas has some quality wins against good teams recently. They do have some. Yes, they beat the Bucs without Giannis, but whatever. They've got some good victories here as of late. And, uh, you know, you just got to find ways to get those kind of wins. The wins that people might not expect you to get. Like beating Denver when they did have Murray. Like I already mentioned that Bucks game. Let me see. Being the Jazz. Uh, you know, you've got quality wins throughout the season where you've shown how good you can be. You also have mind-numbing bad losses where you've played down to your level of competition and let opportunities get away from you. We'll see what happens with that. You know, in the case of the game the other night against Memphis, I said they didn't deserve to win that game, a point I forgot to make and really wish I had. Dallas was basically chasing the lead that entire game. They were in, not super far back in the rearview mirror, but they were not in control of that game. Uh, I think they had like a lead late in the first quarter, lost the lead right before the end of the quarter, and then spent the next two quarters chasing. They might have had it for a minute in the third quarter, I can't remember, but they basically trailed for like all but a minute, essentially, of that game, it felt like. And then... Uh, Mark Followell had a great expression for it. He called it, a, and it's a, uh, from what I understand, like a soccer phrase or whatever, but basically a smash and grab victory, which is to say, like, you know, smash the glass, get your win, get the hell out of there, steal the win and get out, you know? And uh, that's pretty much what they did against Memphis, especially with the craziness of that Luka shot. But we'll see if the team can actually continue to build on that. I'm very much hopeful that, a win like that is so improbable and crazy. And you do have your guys kind of rounding into form. Like your offensive and defensive ratings in the last month or so have been much better than they were middle of the season when you were just ravaged with health and safety protocols and all of that. Now you also have another shooter like JJ Redick, who while you have other guys on this team who are okay shooters and can get hot, like a Tim Hardaway Jr., for instance. Richardson has shown flashes of it, but he's really not delivering like I thought he would for Dallas. Um, with, with someone like a Redick, you have a guy who can shoot a little bit off the dribble and a guy who can run around off screens, curl around, just run around and make a defender chase him like crazy, and then basically create. He doesn't have to be just a catch-and-shoot guy. You know, you saw that in one of his threes the other night. Pump fakes, you know, dribbles to the right to clear out of the, the closeout man, and then gets a great look. He goes three of four uh, for nine points in 15 minutes. And we didn't even get a lot of him and Luca. So you put them on the floor together and kind of see how this team can really come together and gel. And I like the potential. They still have major flaws. And, I, and those flaws, I can point to pretty much any player on the team and say... You need to step up. You need to step up. Rick, I don't know what you're doing all the time, but you need to, you need to get this thing under control. Everyone has it. And I'm sorry if some of you think that there are guys who cannot be criticized even for a single play without being triggered, then I why are you here? Honestly, like if you can't have an honest discussion about your own team, 
then what what are you what are we having a conversation for? I'm not gonna sit here on a soapbox and just praise to the sky that everything is amazing and wonderful at all times. I'm going to give you my honest opinion and assessment. And if I can't even do that for a single play, what are we doing? Oh, I don't know. I've rambled long enough. Like the video, drop a comment, subscribe. Till next time, I've been DDP, you've been awesome, and every legend was once a prospect. Peace. From prospect to legend.